What's up everyone, Sam Mantini here, and I am super excited to finally say that I have posted a video. I know it's been a while and I apologize. Now, today is a little bit different than I've normally posted in the past, and it's actually a conversation that I had with Steve McKeegan from Future Pro Goalie. It was after our on ice session, which I will be posting next week, but this I figured was a great video for anybody just getting back on the ice because I know the rinks are starting to open up now. So if you don't want to get injured or you're curious about what it actually takes to get scouted, then definitely watch this video because we go over all of that and more. So I do know that it's a little longer than normal, but trust me guys, you will love the content in this video. And if you have any other questions for Steve or myself, write them in the comments and the next time I go skate with him, I'll definitely ask him. So with that being said, let's jump into the video. So for goalies like myself and for anybody who's getting on the ice for the first time, what would you recommend for us like if they literally are starting their season tomorrow, they don't have time for practice, they haven't been working out, like what's the best advice that you can give a goalie just starting to get back into it? Well, we've skated several adults in the first three weeks since we've been back here and you see the same consistent things that no matter, even if you have been working out off the ice, the on ice fitness requirements and the components there are dramatically different. So you're not gonna be in shape no matter what you've done. When you get back on the ice or you know you're about to get back out, you at least have to have a week in advance where you really are working on dynamic and static stretching to make sure your groins, hips, and your abs and your core are gonna not get injured. And that's the first primary goal. Let's get back into playing. Let's not worry about stopping a million pucks. Let's get with the primary goal of not getting hurt because then you're back against it for another four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you know you're playing next week, you gotta be spending 35 to 45 minutes every night, static dynamic stretching, watching TV, family guy, whatever you're doing, get things limbered up. Don't worry about the cardio because it's gonna snap you in the butt anyways when you get out there no matter what you do, but make sure you've got limber um, so you're not gonna be causing any issues down there. That's my, my first and primary right thing. Maybe play some ping pong a little bit just to get feeling objects mm. again, but I wouldn't worry about anything. Just go out there with low expectations I just want to have fun. If I give up 20 goals, I don't give a crap. I'm happy to be back here, smell the arena, smell the equipment, hang out with your buddies, make fun of your buddies, chirp them. The stuff you love about hockey's coming back and approach it on that basis. And I'm just not going to get hurt and have fun. And I've got forever to get back into shape stopping pucks. It doesn't, there's no rush. Yeah. I just don't want to get hurt. And that's the way I would summarize what you need to do here when you first get back a month into it. So what's more important, pre or post stretching? I think or both? They're, they're equally important. And the, the pre stretching is obviously going to be dynamic based stretching where you have some motion with control, where you're getting the body activated and the muscle groups warmed up. And then the post stretching is going to prevent delayed onset muscle soreness, which you're going to have. Like if you haven't skated for a well, while, and even you today, you're going to be sitting in the car for two hours, not one hour, yeah. back to Toronto and your, your hips are gonna tighten up, your hip flexors, your groins are gonna be feeling, you're gonna sit on the toilet tonight and feel like you can't get off it. <laughs> and the post-stretching can mitigate that. I also suggest getting a foam roller, they're not very expensive, roll out with some of that, and just sit in front of the TV watching whatever and spend half an hour, 45 minutes, really paying attention to the post-activity workout because that's where you're gonna prevent this ongoing soreness that you have. Not entirely, but it will mitigate it. Gotcha, yeah. So that's basically it. Just don't get hurt. You don't want to be out any longer. That we've waited long enough to play, so don't get hurt. I laugh whenever when anyone comments on my channel. You need to be in the NHL because I made a pretty cool save, which I was out of position and dive like dove for. Yeah. I was like, you have no idea what it takes to be in the NHL, and I'm always just like, I thank you, but like, there's no way I would ever be there. Like, yeah. I appreciate it. The but thoughts like, behind it. Uh, yeah. And and the last point about that is, the effort it takes to get there and the work ethic that you see to get there, is not even what they do once they're there. The once they're there, that's when they step on the gas. And yeah. it was an amazing amount of effort to get to the NHL. But when you see the work ethic that people have, like when I was in the NHL, I know how hard I worked to get there. And then there's never a point where you go, okay, I'm in the NHL. Those guys are trying harder, harder, harder towards the end of their career than they were when they first started. Yeah. And to, you can't describe that to somebody unless you've seen it like you have, or you've been in it osmotically to see the stuff. That's the thing too, it also makes you understand like all, like, your limits at where you are because you know you're not putting in the same amount of work. And I think that's the biggest thing that I hope everybody kind of understands. Like, even if a young guy is watching this right now thinking that they're going to get to the NHL, they really need to understand that they need to be doing, like, what, six times, seven times a week, something to get them better, right? It's not a matter of... I always thought when I grew up, it was some scout that was going to be in the audience at a tournament or something. They were going to write me down on a list, call me up, and, you know, invite me to something. I never knew the process, um, which I really regret not informing myself or learning about it more? I think the, the process question with scouting, having scouted in the NHL, 
is a mystery to a lot of people. They're like you and what you just described there, where they believe there's some guy in a trench coat that just happens to float in and notice somebody somewhere miraculously. Yeah. And that that's a unicorn how that happens. Uh, with data and everything right now, everybody's known. And there's a RinkNet software system that they use in the NHL. I'm sure they still do. For every kid that's playing from like 13 and older is in there. Wow. All height, weight, and everything where they're playing, stats continually updated. So there's a kid playing midget double A in Sudbury that's in that thing. Wow. And we Is all that put just it, submitted from coaches? Yeah, all oh, okay, coaches. Okay. And, and it's verified and updated all the time. It's, it's a working document. And there's video in there now, too. And so what happens is scouting never overlooks anybody. Because of this network, uh, we're like seven degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon, but with NHL scouts, we're one degree of separation. So if you don't know him, I know him. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is suppose a kid's playing in Timbuktu. If he's doing middle of the bell curve type stuff, you might get overlooked because you're not at the end of the bell curve. You need to be, because if you can't dominate that level, yeah. what makes you think you're going to go up to the next level and dominate? And so the people think, well, I'm just as good as the guy that's up there. Well, no, you're not. No. <laughs> and there's another element to that is being good enough often enough. But there's lots of guys playing beer league that on any given day could make a save in the NHL, like the David Ayers guy. Of course. But you can't repeat that nine games out of 10. No. Now, if that David Ayers played 10 games in the NHL, he would get fully lit. A hundred percent. But I love seeing it. It's a great human interest story, mm -hmm. and it proves that on any given moment, anybody could do it. To sum up the scouting thing. It's done informally by people that know hockey that call people. And I've placed kids in scholarships and OHL draft lists and stuff by calling up somebody I know and they trust me, I trust them. And it's, I'm not an agent pumping some kid that's paying me, yeah. or I'm not in some scouting service. It's when a hockey guy calls up another hockey guy and says, yes, this kid can do it. It's not a randomized thing. It's people that know, talk, and that's how you get scouted. Yeah. So you gotta dominate the level you're at and you're ready for the next level. Reflecting back now as a beer league, rec league goalie, I've always asked those guys, and you know, knowing what you know right now, mm -hmm. If I could put you, Sammy, back as a 10-year-old kid with the knowledge base you have right now, what do you think you could do differently with that? Where do you think your career would change? And obviously, you have mm -hmm. to have some, some stuff follow in a row to help out. But what do you think would be different knowing what you know now? The biggest thing, if I went back to 10, I think I would actively take my fitness seriously because I didn't. Um, I wasn't ever like a... I never was in the gym really and I should have been. I was always I played on my high school team, I did all that, but I only did the minimum I needed to to keep playing. And that was I think my biggest mistake. It wouldn't have been one decision here playing on a different team. I think it would have just I would have tried out for AAA right away and just working out more. And like the rest whatever happens happens, but that's all I would do differently. I think to the one topic about well, how does a beer leaguer get better when they don't practice and they get a 3-minute warm up? Yeah. So in that environment you're set up for failure. How can you get better? Uh, I'm a big believer that the ability to connect the dots, read the play, and understand what's happening can help you. So there's a lot of mental stuff that can happen away from the rink. And uh, I'm a big believer in critical study of scoring chances at high-level games and understanding, okay, what's going on with this. And, you know, a casual, non-professional observer might say, well, goalie had no chance on that. And I'll say, okay, well, let's look at sequential issues that caused the final goal. So suppose the goal was Ovechkin scoring bar down from his normal spot, yeah. and the goalie, you know, was a 95-mile-an-hour smoker bar down. Okay, that alone would say, okay, goalie had no chance. But then if you look at the zone entry, it was a soft dump that wasn't handled cleanly by the goalie. It got pushed along the boards because the defense was under supreme du duress. Winger turns it over. It hums around in the zone for a little bit, and then it gets backdoored, and Ovechkin does what he does. So an intelligent person analyzing the game isn't going to say, well, he had no chance on Ovechkin's thing. He's going to say, well, if I got a clean touch on the initial dump and we had a zone exit with possession, mm -hmm. then he doesn't even get that shot. And so the cause and effect is a teachable thing, and there's a sequence of questions I have in a script that people can follow when they watch any video. It could be OHL. And okay, what happened on the scoring chance? Success, failure, was, was the goalie's depth? Was he lined up on the puck? Was he lined up in the body? Was he aware of the off-puck threats? Like all these things we do at the high levels mm -hmm. can still apply in a, in a more um, niche way to, to beer league goalies. And I think you can improve a beer league goalie in a mass way if they don't have access to ice by getting the brain developing on a re regular basis and doing cognitive homework. Yeah. Because like at the end, Eddie Belfour was slower than you move right now. <laughs> no way. At the end. 
But because yeah. he had such a prime ability to intelligently anticipate, connect dots, and know if A's happening and B's set up, then it's likely going to be C, and I'm going to meet the puck there before it even gets there and make a boring save. Yeah. And the mental thing allows goalies to make saves more so than the physical, and I think in most cases, even at the beer league level. I agree, because I think you mentioned a video, you were in a video recently, you were saying like, Goalies don't react to seeing the puck. I think it was even Trav's video, maybe, or yeah. you did one as well as him. It's like, it's true. I, I wear glasses. And I don't, like, I I need them. Like, I could read this plate and stuff without them. I don't absolutely need to be wearing them all the time. I just prefer to. But I notice myself, 99% of the times, I'm doing it based on where I believe the puck is going, and I'm reading the play, and I'm just like, he's a right-hander, he's a left-hander, he's, like, he always goes high, he always goes low, he's a deeker. Like, I'm not using my vision. And I think that's, like, growing up, I watched a, a VHS all the time, uh, NHL's Masked Men, a last line of defense. And I talked about it in a video where, like, I learned so much from watching that video, and that's what got me better. I didn't have goalie coaches. I didn't have any of that. And that's where I realized where I was five years ago as a beer league versus where I am now as a beer leaguer, I've gotten better because I've been analyzing my games. And I think you're right. I, think, I don't think as many people realize the power of the mental game that... Um, goaltending like it, it demands of you to understand two thoughts there's a mythology that I touched on about goaltending where there's this perception that juggling and uh, hand-eye stuff you know those are good warm-ups but physiologically speaking you can't improve innate reaction time like it, mm -hmm. when you touch the fire and your hand comes off it's an automatic response of sub 200 milliseconds so there's no way that can be improved like you, you can't get better at pulling your hand into the fire okay. it is what it is yeah and when you talk about the depth of the puck is away from the net and it's going at 85 miles an hour, it's going to get to the thing in less than 200 milliseconds, which is within the constraints of your reaction time. So you, you physically can't react. But how do goalies make those saves and they appear like they're reacting? Well, they are studying stick-puck relationship. And you can learn a lot based on stick-puck relationship where it's likely going to go, where you have a decent idea on the net based on all the other visual information besides the actual flight of the puck. Mm -hmm. And so in minor leagues and maybe some soft beer leagues, you can react to a snapper from the wall where you got time and you do that. But in an article I wrote in Goalies World in 96, I said, there's only two saves a goalie's ever going to make, a blocking or a reaction save. That's it. Mm -hmm. You're either going to block, like a backdoor pass, or you're just going to get over there and jam stuff up in the box. Or a guy snaps a long one from the point that you catch. Like yeah. th th there's, it's either one or the other. And the proportion is important to understand because it's 8 or 9 out of 10 are the blocking ones. Because very rarely do you have a guy come down the wing and waste one at the net and the goalie catches it because it's, it's a lost opportunity. Yeah. Okay, no, I think that's pretty much good. Unless there's anything you want to add. Don't follow anything I do. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm the worst goalie coach ever. And all I do is keep wearing NHL tracksuits of teams I worked for or played for, and it drives people crazy. I'm a terrible goalie coach. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm on my way home now, but before I got home, I just wanted to say, first off, thank you, Steve, for your help. If you guys guys don't know or where to find him go to future pro goalie on Instagram or on YouTube you'll find his channel he shares tons of great content and I know for sure he'll be able to help you get better like he's helping me get better even if you're not able to work with him in person so that's basically it guys just focus on you know just enjoying the fact that we get to be back and don't get hurt you don't want to be out for another three four weeks because you get an injury because you didn't stretch before you didn't stretch after or you try to make some ridiculously big save, you know, and compromising your groin area or something, trying to do the splits or something, which you haven't done in over three months. So play safe. Don't care whether or not they score on you. It's gonna happen. Just keep going and just be grateful that we're back. And the really cool part about getting to meet with Steve, I was able to share my vision for tpshgoalie.com and how I see it growing and escalating and he wants to become a part of it, which is really exciting, not only for me and having somebody like him involved, but also for you guys, if you wanna be a TPSH goalie member and actually benefit from having professional goalie coaching, somebody who's been in the NHL, who has scouted for the NHL, has been a goalie coach for the NHL, you know, and now teaches goalies around the world professionally. Like, he's done it for many, many, many years. So to have him on board is a huge step um, and getting closer to where I see TPSH goalie being. With that being said, if you want to be a TPSH goalie member, this is the last week for you to join at $9 a month because after this week, I'm gonna be closing registration 100% and whoever is in after I close registration, you'll be locked in as a TPSH goalie member forever at $9 a month. But just know that once I reopen registration with the help of Steve, 
with all the videos that we're gonna create together, how to's, like how to T push, how to butterfly, how to butterfly slide, how to recover, you know, how to read the play, all these amazing how to videos that we're gonna create together for you guys. I'm gonna be raising the price up to $47 a month because $9 was just literally for anybody as a thank you for joining in even though I wasn't done building the website yet. That's all it is, is I wanted to thank you guys for becoming an early member and in return for that, I wanted to give you guys an amazing 80% discount that you'll be locked into. So if you wanna get in before I close registration, go to tpshgoalie.com, register now, and just know I got really good content coming soon. For example, like the full practice that I did with Steve today, I'll actually be uploading the full entire practice on tpshgoalie.com, and I'm gonna be doing that very often. The more I get out with him, and even with my full games, I might be posting longer form videos for you guys on top of my video goal breakdowns in more detail. So if you wanna become a TPSH goalie member, do it now before I close registration because you'll never be able to get in for this price ever again. Trust me, you'll regret it if you wanna join later after seeing all the amazing things that I'm gonna be putting inside of it. So anyways guys, if you like this video, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and go check out Steve at Future Pro Goalie. Um, whether on YouTube or Instagram or both, go share, go subscribe, go like his stuff because he does put out a lot of good content. And thank you, Steve, for taking the time to work with me, even though I barely felt like I did any work. But I did feel like I was going to throw up, that's for sure. Anyways, guys, have a wonderful day, and I hope you guys get on the ice soon. So take care.